One of my favourite things about the park is that when I drive in and walk down to the pipes, it's like I can feel the love and the care and the energy that's gone into creating what we see today. My name is Sharon Mundy. I'm a ranger at Organ Parks National Park and I love working here. It's a really special place. I've been working here for uh, just over two years and I love it. It's actually the, the closest national park to Melbourne and it's only about 20 kilometres northwest of the city. This site is, is recognised throughout the world as an amazing geological site. You can touch the volcanic history at Organ Pipes National Park. Where the car park is, you can see that there's lots of scoria on the ground. And when you look at it, you can see the air pockets. You can see that it's from a volcano. So uh, gas needed to escape, it escaped and the air pockets remained. And the scoria is quite light because of it. Western Victoria was a huge volcanic plain. So this area shows the successive volcanic eruptions that have formed so much of this land. When they've looked at the rock, they've found that the rock, the basalt that is now here, is uh, probably about a million years ago that it was laid down. It cracked very slowly over a number of years and it cracked vertically. And we have these incredible hexagonal columns that at some point are a metre across. And they're, about, they're, they're quite high, as you can see behind me. They're striking. When we go to Rosette Rock, that's actually an air pocket that a, that lava flowed into. It was like a, a, like a cave that it flowed into and it, it became the, it filled up the cave with lava and now it looks like the spokes of a wheel or a rose, which is quite, it's called Rosette Rock. This is the land of the Wurundjeri and for many thousands of years, they would camp and hunt and fish here. We have found enormous evidence of Aboriginal occupation. You can see a spot where they would have been sitting up on a hill, maybe watching the kids play in Jackson's Creek and chipping away at rocks to make tools. In the 1830s, people came and settled in this area. Um, it was considered good grazing country for sheep. So uh, people came, there's a homestead on the land, old ruins of the homestead on the land that um, show evidence of the house that they built. They cleared a lot of land, a lot of land became degraded. Over time, the whole area that we now know as Organ Pipes National Park was covered in 90% noxious weeds and a lot of native animals had gone and found habitat elsewhere. And this is one of the most amazing examples of rehabilitation of the land. The Parks Agency and the Friends of Organ Pipes have both done work and have done it for over 40 years. Now we have so many native animals have returned. There are kangaroos, there are swamp wallabies, there are so many birds of prey and other, other birds that are around here. There's still the evidence of weeds and so many weed grasses, but I think we're, we have come a long way and we're really winning because it's a spectacular place now. I will be making sure the area is a safe place for visitors and also a place where animals can thrive and grow and have, have a habitat that will sustain their population. And one of my favourite spots is the tessellated pavement where you are standing and climbing among the top of these long basalt columns. And you can really explore parts of Jackson's Creek because there's lots of access to the creek around there. And then there's a spot where you can go a bit further and there's part of the, the side of the rocks that kind of overhangs, but you can still see all these incredible rock formations really close up and it's almost like a little cave as you go in there. I love being there because it, it's like a world away and it's, it's just nature as it has been for eons and eons. Nothing else really exists, it's just that. The great thing about visiting a park, visiting organ pipes or any park, is that you get to slow down and be at nature's pace. And something that's really special that I like to do is to close my eyes and just listen. Feel the wind, hear the trees, the birds, any distant sounds that are around, and it gets me to tune in to nature. And it's those moments that are sometimes super special because you'll see nature that you won't see if you're just walking along or rushing. In this park, you might see a swamp wallaby on the side of the path. You might even see a platypus, because we have platypus in Jackson's Creek. You might see those animals that are a bit shy, that if you stop and you're still, 
and you listen to nature, you'll find. Organ Parks National Park is an ideal place to bring students for a school excursion. It's quite compact. You can come and be studying the geological processes of the land, uh, the Aboriginal connection to the land. You'll also discover boxes where microbats live and sugar gliders that um, Parks Victoria have encouraged back into the park. If teachers want more information or to get a bit of a self-guided excursion plan, they can go to the teachers portal on Parks Victoria website. This land is managed by Parks Victoria, it's Wurundjeri land, lots of community groups come here and visit, but it is your park. It is the community's park, it is Melbourne's park, Victoria's park. Come and visit, because it's amazing. <laughs>